to update you guys on Nigeria. I, I spent some time with uh, contacts on the ground in Nigeria yesterday. I told you that there had been violence um, towards Ande Emmanuel. If you don't remember who Ande Emmanuel is, he is an activist leader on the part of the United Methodist Church in Nigeria, and he's um, he's been an antagonist. I've actually interviewed him uh, once before. It was a good interview, I think, but um, he's very much not... He, he thinks that well, he and I are pretty much on opposite sides of everything. He's for the institution. I'm for, I mean, here's his Facebook profile right here. You see he's got the open hearts, open minds, open doors. Nobody has that anymore. Uh, but he's he's put himself forward as an Episcopal candidate. He loved talking on the floor of General Conference, doing that a lot. That's a picture of him right here. Here is a video of him right here. I think he's in his hospital room. But he is denying that he got beat up at all. But according to eyewitness testimony yesterday, the guy got terribly beaten, said uh, had blood coming out of his mouth, said uh, was getting stomped on the ground. It was pretty bad. Got this uh, treatment a couple of days ago on Sunday. So the developments here, and you're, I, I might get a couple details wrong, but generally speaking, all of this is going to be accurate. You know, I'm a broad strokes guy. Um, within Nigeria, of course, the Nigerian United Methodist Church had a big split under Bishop Johanna a few months ago. They left the United Methodist Church en masse. Their trustees went to the Nigerian government and changed the name of their organization to the Global Methodist Church, and it was approved by the state of Nigeria. Um, there was a legal battle a couple of months ago the attorney general or assistant attorney general got representatives of the United Methodist Church and the Global Methodist Church together, had both make their cases as to why it is that each of them should control these buildings and assets, and the the state government heard the case from the United Methodist Church and the Global Methodist Church and sided with the Global Methodist Church. What really all came down to was, has the United Methodist Church legalized homosexuality? Has it normalized, has it blessed homosexuality? And the answer after this last general conference was, yes, it's plain for all to see that even though they make provision for certain regions to maintain their own cultural norms and values, that's what they're saying across Africa right now is, if you don't like gay marriage, don't get gay married. You, you don't have to have it there, but we're going to have it in America and you need to deal with it. In Nigeria, most who have come to understand the picture for what it is, have said, no, we don't want anything to do with that anymore. And so they've split away with the Global Methodist Church. The state of Nigeria is hostile to Western cultural imposition. They don't, they're not at all in favor of the gay stuff. And so as soon as that became evident to them, it was just very clear the Global Methodist Church is the only legal entity in Nigeria now. They've made it clear that the United Methodist Church is not a legal entity anymore. Bishop John Scholl, and many United Methodist leaders have continued to engage the state, trying to advocate for themselves, getting some of the property. I know United Methodist women, or I think they're called uh, United Women of Faith now. I forget what they're called. They've got a lawsuit um, in the Judicial Council for the United Methodist Church trying to get some of their property back that the GMC took. Um, it, it's a big, complicated mess, but in the midst of all this, they couldn't find their Articles of Incorporation for the United Methodist Church. The, the state lost track of them. So the GMC started declaring victory and saying, hey, we, uh, we're the legal entity now. Our trustees have been able to change the name. All of our churches are now GMC. And in the midst of that, Andre Emanuel made a post saying, hey, don't worry. This is all propaganda. We still have our Articles of Incorporation. And he posted a scanned copy of it on Facebook. He immediately took it back off because what it pretty clearly indicated was that he had stolen it from a government office in Jalingo. And so uh, people who were friends with him, and not really friends with him, screenshotted it to show that he had done that. And so I got sent the screenshot yesterday, and now he has a warrant out for his arrest from Jalingo for stealing government property. So he hasn't been in Jalingo um, there'd been this uh, drama in Abuja. I showed you footage yesterday of a church where they took down the United Methodist sign on the inside and they're celebrating. 
I had previous to that, a month or so ago, shown you footage of uh, them having a church fight because after the GMC claimed title, there were fights in all kinds of churches all over, including this one. Uh, well, I, I shouldn't indicate that there were t- there was arguing in many churches as reps from the GMC went from church to church saying, we're GMC now, we're not with the UMC. And then there was uh, arguing about what had happened and who was actually in charge. And that continues to go on because it's a big spread out country and they're not as interconnected as we are in the West. So in this fight, uh, you know, the police got called and then the police locked down the property. And then after things got figured out, the assistant inspector general interviewed with uh, many GMC leaders. This church has a big gate around it. They unlocked the gate. They let them come in and change the signage. And then they were expecting to have worship there this last Sunday. The day before or two days before, Ande flies in from Tanzania, and he is able to get the local police to operate in contradiction to the orders of the assistant attorney general, which is weird. How did that happen? Inspector general, excuse me. How did that happen? It's still not entirely clear, but the police came and they locked down the premises again. And thousands of people that were expecting to worship there that Sunday were locked out of the property and very upset because this was not supposed to happen. So eventually people give up. The state is there to guarantee that they don't go into the church. And uh, a few people are still standing around. (coughs) (coughs) And they see Ande Emanuel come on the back of a motorbike um, by the property. And then he uh, comes back through and he's smiling at the people, which they take to be insulting because he seems to be rejoicing in the fact that they're locked out. And then, according to the guy I talked to, he actually got off his bike, tried to walk into the premises, and then these young GMC guys there, they're probably GMC, who knows, are, uh, the the police report says unidentified people, so we don't know for a fact that they're GMC, they're almost certainly GMC. They stop him, they say, you're Ande Emanuel, what are you doing here? He says, oh, I'm not, I'm I'm not Ande, I'm not Ande, and they finally just beat him really badly. And then he's rushed to the hospital. And then um, he has police there that after he's given medical attention, they take him to the police headquarters. And according to the guys that I talked to, he escaped police custody because he knew he had a warrant out for his arrest from Jalingo. This is in Abuja now. Um, And so he is now running from the law. I don't know. It could be that I've heard this wrong. It could be that that other people are confused. So I totally reserve the right to change my reporting on this later. But as it is, it seems like Ande is injured. He's running from the police. He's posting stuff on Facebook saying, oh, none of this is true. So there is a hypothetical world where I've totally heard wrong, but I don't think so. These guys that I've talked to have been pretty solid for me for some time. So... um Meanwhile, on WhatsApp, you know, the whole way I got a hold of this information was on WhatsApp. I'm a part of a a group with dozens, if not hundreds, of native Nigerians and Africans. And so many of them, half of them are rejoicing that Ande got beat up, finally. He's had it coming for a long time. He's he's lied. He's, He's caused all kinds of division and dissension in Nigeria. They've just consistently wondered, what is it animating this guy? What, what, what compels him to behave this way? Why would he behave this way? And so there's this cathartic, finally, the Lord let him get this beat down that he needed. But then half of the other people, including, I mean, the American voices, oh, I can't believe you would rejoice that this man is getting hurt. You know, we pray for our enemies. We love our enemies. And so many of the Nigerians have said, you don't know what you're talking about. You Americans stay in your own lane. Um of course, I've said nothing uh, on one way or the other on that. Uh, I, I would not say that uh, we get to read the Bible differently based on where we live and the injunctions to pray for our enemy and, and care for those who hate us. I would not say that those don't apply in Nigeria. I just feels complicated, maybe because I don't know. I don't know why. I'm, I don't think I'm worried about being neocolonial. Um, I, my personal feelings are I would rather that Ande not get beat up, 
but I'm just consistently frustrated that what he says is so different from what other people say, and there doesn't seem to be any way to navigate truth from fiction. So, um, you know, I was told before general conference that he couldn't even leave the country, uh, that his visa was denied, and and uh, then he went to general conference. So I obviously heard wrong. I'm confused all the time about this stuff, but I'm almost certain that he actually did get beat up. Uh, and regardless of whether or not he did, all these tensions in Nigeria are real. It still remains to be seen if the United Methodist Church can cobble any of these properties together. There are definitely a lot of clergy that have still said that they want to remain United Methodist, but whenever the state gets involved, which it has, I'm not sure what legal options they have for holding on to these properties. So keep eyes on Nigeria, and they're not the only country where there's a lot of tension. We've been looking at Liberia. Cote d'Ivoire uh, left the UMC, but it remains to be seen if the UMC is going to try and keep them in. I've heard stuff about Zambia recently. So this is stuff going on all around the world uh, that we should keep our eyes on. So we'll pray for them at the end of the hour.